so let us move to the next lecture of ring theory so we will in the first problem we will try to look at uh, this uh, thing so that the non zero elements that are not relatively prime to n are the only zero divisors so we have done in this uh, in in our e earlier lecture that we were trying to find the zero divisors and then we found out that zero divisors came up to be all those numbers which were not relatively prime to n and if a number is relatively prime to n then we understood that they turned up to be units of z okay so in in zn what i have to remember two things if a number is relatively prime to n then that number becomes a unit and if a number is not relatively prime to n then that becomes a that becomes a zero divisor okay so this is the reason if i lo look up the at the second uh, thing what are the zero divisors in zp so if you're looking at zp you know that uh, if you take any number which is less than p then it is always relatively prime and therefore this this is true for all a in zp so this means that all the elements are what all the elements are units and therefore zp has no zero divisors so no elements remain here and this is the reason if if you have a set which does not have zero divisors then that set becomes what that set becomes an integral domain so so we here now conclude that zp is actually what integral domain actually we know that we have earlier seen that zp is a field right and every field is what every field is an integral domain so this is yet another verification that why zp is integral domain because it has no zero divisors all the elements in zp will become unit except p okay all the elements less than p will become units in this okay so the next uh, thing is important for us that uh, if you if the cancellation law remember in your group theory the cancellation laws were saying that if ab is equal to ac then you can in group theory okay you can always say that b is equal to c this this result holds true in group theory no matter whichever group you take okay but in ring theory this result will hold under some condition that that condition is that the ring should not have zero divisors that is the ring must be what what is the ring with no zero devices that is the ring must be integral domain okay so remember that in ring theory now you have to be careful if you want to apply the left cancellation law or the right cancellation law the ring must be which type of ring the ring must be a integral domain only then you can use the cancellation laws we will not prove this particular result but we may use it somewhere in future okay now this theorem we have already uh, mentioned in the previous lecture that every field is an integral domain so i didn't don't need to talk about anything on this now the now if we try to think what about the converse is every integral domain a field so this is actually a we will say this is a partial converse of that particular theorem what does this say that every integral domain is a field provided it is what provided it is a finite so i will write the result here that every field is uh, integral domain but every integral domain if i want to make it a field it should satisfy what condition it should be finite also so this will help me so what is the best example or application of this particular theorem we know that zp has no zero devices right we just now prove that zp has no zero devices right this means that zp is integral domain and zp is finite zp has how many elements it has only p elements this means that by this theorem whatever this theorem is suppose i'm writing 19.11 okay i can conclude that now zp will become a field okay so this is just a small application of this particular theorem right so what is the next uh, immediate consequence of that immediate consequences that is what i told you just now if p is a prime then zp is a field that is what we have proved in this example also okay what is meant by a characteristic of a ring so what i will do is i will take an element a in the ring and uh, let n be some positive integer 
and if it turns out that n into a is equal to 0 for all a in the ring okay so this is any a let a be any element okay and if and this n is such a magical number that if i multiply that n by any element of the ring okay then the answer is coming to be how much the answer is to be coming to be zero and this n is what this n is a positive integer n is not zero remember okay uh, so what is an example it really seems sometimes impossible that how can it happen that i am multiplying a non zero number by some by all the elements and i'm getting zero still the number is actually what the number is actually a positive number so the so let's take example of z6 Okay, Z6 modulo 6 multiplication modulo 6. What happens with respect to Z6? We know that in Z6, if I multiply 6 by 1 bar, 6 by 2 bar, what is the meaning of 6 by 1 bar? Means 1 bar will be added what? 1 bar will be added 6 times. In what? In Z and this will become 0. So 6 by uh, 2 bar, this will be this will be 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is, which is 12 bar, and that will become 0. So 6, if I multiply with all the elements of Z6, I'm going to get 0. So that magical number n turns out to be how much? That number is 6. Not only that, it must be a smallest number. Okay. So that, uh, that number that I find saying n should be the smallest such number. So in this case, we will say that the characteristic of z6 is how much is 6 it's a positive and it is the smallest do you know any other number which is greater than 6 and it satisfies the same property someone may say to if i take n equal to 12 still 12 into 1 bar 12 into 2 bar 12 into 3 bar that will also become 0 so this means the characteristic should be 6 or 12 we want the smallest number so that smallest number is 6 okay it may happen that sometime in a ring, you may not find such a number uh, satisfying this property. So if what is an example, you just consider the set of integers. Okay, can we find a number n into an, any integer? It is coming zero for all integers, all a are integers. So, can, do, so do we know also which number is n into two is also zero, n into three is also zero, n into 4 is also 0, n into 1 is all, or everything is 0, okay? But this but this number should not be equal to 0. It must be a positive number. Can you find such a number? So the answer to that question is no, we cannot find such a number. In that case, the characteristic of ring is actually denoted by what? It is actually denoted by 0. So let us insert this part in our definition. So what is the definition? If such number does not exist then i will say that the characteristic of that particular ring will be how much that particular ring will be declared as i will declare it as zero this is what i'm defining okay so so for example let me ask you what is the characteristic of the following rings what is the characteristic of set of real numbers the characteristic of set of real numbers if which number can i find so that that number multiplied by every number n into a bar should be equal to zero for all real numbers so again the answer to this question is no we cannot find and therefore what is the characteristic of the set of real numbers the characteristic of set of rational numbers on the same lines the characteristic of complex numbers everything will be equal to how much zero what is the characteristic of the set of set of numbers there of ring zn the characteristic of ring zn has to be how much ring has to be n okay so this finishes the meaning of the characteristic can we find the characteristic of uh, can we find the characteristic of uh, z cross z what is the characteristic of z cross z if what number should i multiply to a comma b so that i will get zero for all pairs a comma b belonging to z cross z there is no such number so this means that i will declare that the characteristic is equal to how much the characteristic is equal to zero okay no such so this means by definition the characteristic of z cross z 
will become zero. But interesting life will come when I ask you the characteristic of Z5 cross Z3. What is the characteristic of Z5 cross Z3? We know that characteristic of Z5 is five, and we know that characteristic of Z3 is three, and therefore what should be the characteristic of Z5 cross Z3? So you choose the least common multiple of three and five, so that will do your job so that will because it should be least right because i want the characters to be the smallest such number okay so this 15 will become the characteristic of what characteristic of z5 cross z3 in general i'm trying to tell you that characteristic of zm cross zn will simply turn out to be how much it will turn out to be the lcm of mn and so this important formula will help me in solving some problems right now what we are struggling here in this section is that we won't be proving that but we just have to observe here that in this problem we are asked what is the characteristic of an integral domain now this this result tells us that the characteristic of integral domain has only two choices either it can be zero or it can be a prime number okay characteristic of an integral domain cannot be a composite number this is a very important result okay let us try to write down. let us quickly try to write down what are the integral domains that we know so the integral domains that we know are real numbers rational numbers complex numbers then 2z okay all these are integral domains okay i'm sorry 2z is not an integral it doesn't have unity then you have uh, zps okay these are all and where p is a prime okay so these are the integral domains that we know look at the characteristics of all of them what are the characteristics the characteristic is zero 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 and prime so the characteristic of an integral domain that we know at least we know are all what either coming up to be zero or they are coming up to be prime numbers so this result tells us that okay let me recall one very important thing okay let me recall one important thing what is the meaning of a zero divisor zero divisor means a should not be zero b should not be zero but uh, but what a b should be equal to what a b should be equal to zero then this means that a and b are said to be what they are said to be zero divisors okay this definition equivalently means that if a b is equal to zero if a b is equal to zero in integral domain this is very important remark okay do not forget this if if a b is equal to zero in integral domain now now what now what is an integral domain it it does not have zero device so in integral domain d suppose i'm calling that integral domain d so if if i get that product of two numbers is equal to zero in an integral domain then i know that this integral domain does not have its have zero devices it cannot contain zero devices so can it happen that a is zero and uh, a is not zero and b is not a zero this cannot happen because uh, because in integral domain you never get such zero devices so equivalently this is trying to tell us that if in an integral domain if product of two numbers comes up to be zero then i can 100% say that either a is zero or what b is zero because agar dono non zero hote if both are non zero then what will happen and uh, if, if both are non zero still the product is zero then you will get zero divisors and in that case it won't remain to be an integral domain but we know that we are working in integral domain so if in an integral domain if i get the product of two numbers is coming to be zero i can surely say that one of the number has to be zero both also can be zero okay but both non-zero cannot be allowed because if both are non-zero then you will try get what you will get zero devices in the set of, in that integral domain which is not possible okay now let us quickly go through these uh, true and false and try to answer ourselves okay uh, nz has zero devices if n is not a prime okay now what is nz okay if i'm look, looking at the first set what is nz forget about this prime and non-prime what is nz let's take uh let's take 5z okay what about 5z 5z means all multiples of 5 0 plus minus 5 plus minus 10 this is uh, this is a set okay uh, does it have zero devices first of all if uh, can you tell me two numbers which are both 
which are both non zero okay but their product is zero can you can you search two numbers from this list which are both non zero but their multiplication is zero in z so this is all this is a subset of all this is a subset of z this is a subset of integers okay then you will say no i cannot find if you take any two numbers from this list their multiplication will never turn up to be zero if both are non zero right means it is trying to tell you that if if the product of two numbers is zero i can surely say that what either the first number is zero or the second number is coming to be zero right this is in which in which set in the set phi z so this means that phi z has actually no zero divisors okay why phi is so important can i take 4z if i if i replace 5 by 4 what will happen still the story will be the same the story of 5 and 4 is not different right if you even if you take product of two numbers is 0 and all numbers are multiples of 4 still you have to say that one of the two numbers has to be equal to 0 this means that 4z also has no zero divisors this means nz has no ha, does not have zero divisors at all okay so the so it does not depend on whether n is prime or whether n is not prime okay nz never has zero divisors so this statement is actually what the statement is false so second every field is an integral domain this is obviously true because this is a standard theorem that we have studied in the lecture so what is the characteristic of nz the characteristic of nz look at this set what is the characteristic of 4z 4z is an infinite set can you find some number n such that any number into this set is becoming zero for all uh, for all elements of of 4z you will say that there is no such number which will make zero multiplication for a uh, and that number must be positive number right so you can can you find such a number the answer to that question is no this means that characteristic of nz is what character if you cannot find such number what is the characteristic that we declare for such rings for such ring i declare the characteristic to be equal to zero so the statement is false fifth statement uh, fifth uh, sorry fourth question is trying to tell me that every integral domain has uh, of characteristic zero is uh, is what is infinite now is this true okay we know that just now we have studied that characteristic of an integral domain has only two choices what are the two choices either it can be zero or it can be prime okay if it is prime then the ring becomes finite right therefore it means that if it is zero what must be the ring the ring must be the ring must be infinite right so this means that if i know that an, an integral domain which is of characteristic zero then that integral domain must be what that integral domain must be an infinite set so this is obviously true z is a subfield of q so this is trying to tell me that z is a subfield of yes z is a subset of q that is correct but is z a subfield of q so first firstly i should ask the question that is z a field is it a field so we know that z is not a field because 2 has no inverse so how can z be a field if it's not a field how can it be subfield it is a subset yes but it is not a subfield of q so this statement is uh, also false okay